Creative Critters, and welcome to Sketching with Sarah. I'm Sarah, and for this week's video, I'm getting into the spooky spirit and sitting down to do a quick sketchbook sesh with you guys. I was at my local flea market a couple weeks ago, and I found a vendor that had some real animal skulls for sale, so I bought a raccoon and a mink skull. I thought it would be so fun to draw. I love raccoons, and I love minks, and I think a really helpful way of learning anatomy of an animal is by looking at their skull and their skeleton. I love drawing from life, and the cool thing about a skull is you can place it on your desk and it doesn't move. The fun challenge with drawing alive animals is capturing the movement and them moving around and it forces you to practice gesture drawing and I love gesture drawing and how loose and free it is to not be super technical with your drawing. I always start any drawing that I do really gesturally and light to get the proportions and the composition right before committing to the line art and more confident lines and shading. So right now it looks like a hot mess, but that's how I like to start all of my drawings because it takes away that pressure of the drawing and trying to get it perfect the first time. And it also gets rid of that daunting white paper. After getting the initial sketch down, I started zoning in on details like the teeth and studying where the different parts of the skull met with one another and the negative spaces that they created with one another. This is the part of my sketching process that I spend most of my time and it's just me looking at the skull and then looking at my paper and really trying to figure out what's different about the shapes that I see in front of me versus what I drew on my page. And it really helps if you don't look at it like, oh, this is a tooth and that's where the nostril is and this is the eye hole or whatever technical terms that it is. It really helps if you detach from knowing what it is and just looking at the shapes of it. I find that really helps me draw what's in front of me more accurately because if you get all the shapes right, it'll look like whatever you're trying to draw. I'm still being pretty sketchy at this point because I'm still drawing the main parts of the skull in just a little more detail. I've explained this in other videos before, but I like to keep the whole drawing at the same level of completeness so I don't get sucked into one area and that area gets really overworked and really detailed and wonderful and beautiful and great and then you look over and the rest of it is just a sketch. It also makes me feel more accomplished when I see everything coming together all at the same time and it also helps so I don't get bored in one area. I keep constantly moving around so it's constantly refreshing and it holds my attention. This is a skill that I learned in art school because when everything is at the same level and you get a critique it's easier to see where parts of the drawings work with the rest of it and where it doesn't work and it helps to keep everything consistent but the main reason that I like to do this is because if I get really hyper focused on a small area of detail like the teeth for example and all of my attention goes there and then I step back and what if I notice that one of the teeth is just a little bit too much to the left or the right or wherever and I spent so much time getting the shape and shading right on that one tooth it makes it harder to fix it whereas if everything is on the same level it's easier to catch those little things earlier on and work with the piece to make it better so once I got the shape where I liked it. I took my watercolor pencil that I've been sketching with and added a little more pigment wherever I wanted a light wash of color and shadow. Then I took my water brush pen and softened selected areas to give it a softer gradient and give that sketch some more form. I try to not overdo it with the water at this point because I still like to go back and add more defined lines and shading later on with the color pencil and really pull it all together. But while the water is still wet, I took the same watercolor pencil and just lightly touched where I wanted really deep areas to be and where I was seeing the darkest shadows in the skull. When you put watercolor pencil onto wet paper, it really emphasizes the pigments even more than if you were to wash over an area that you put a lot of color pencil on. I don't really know how to explain it, but you'll see in the drawing that purple really pops a lot when there's already water on the page. I only did this in really strategic areas where it could use a little pop where the shadows were the darkest. It is a little bit hard to control the bleed outs and the fuzzy edges with this technique, so I try to add a little pop here and there to suggest the hollow areas and then clean it up once it's dried a little bit more. And once everything was dried, I sharpened my watercolor pencil again and really nailed in some of that liner to add some final structure to the sketch. 
I love varying the line weight to give the drawing even more form, and line art is probably my favorite part of any traditional art or digital art that I do if I decide to add line art to it. It really forces me to take my time and crispen up everything for a nice tight sketch. So as you watch me add in some finishing touches, I wanted to thank today's sponsor, me. I do still have some frutal stickers available for sale on my website, sketchingwithsarah.com, and I'm very excited to share these with you, so grab them all you still can and head on over to my website to order your own little frutal babies. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching this little sketchbook session of a raccoon skull that I found at a flea market. If you liked this video, don't forget to leave it a like and subscribe for more art and animal related content. I upload a new video here every Friday and I would love to have you along on my YouTube journey. If you made it this far, leave a comment and let me know if you want to see me sketch my mink skull too. The skull that I got is missing some teeth and the teeth keep falling out and I think I may or may not have glued a tooth in the wrong tooth hole to try and put everything back together. But I just love minks so I had to get one. So let me know if you want to see me draw that one in a future video. Also want to know if you're just as excited for Halloween as I am. I'm also excited for October because as of right now I am planning to do Inktober which is a daily ink drawing challenge in the month of October. So be sure to follow me on Instagram to see what I come up with for this year's Inktober prompts. I also have a playlist of past Inktober drawings that I've done here on YouTube if you want to see what else I've created for Inktober. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay creative and I will see you in next Friday's video.